Well, hello everyone and welcome back. This is our last official view of the law of sines and the law of cosines. So let's go ahead and get started and let's just discuss the difference between the law of sines and cosines. So when do you use which one? So hopefully you recall if you have side angle side or side side side. That's where we're going to stick with the law of cosines. So get those in your head. Side angle side or side side side, we're going law of cosines. And that rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine angle a. And the thing you got to keep first, or in mind here, is what you're finding came first. So these letters can be interchanged. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, you only have to memorize one of them. But what you're finding comes first. Um, and then the law of sines. We're going to use this one when we have angle, angle, side, or angle, side, side. And that will tell us our law of sines. And basically, we said the key to memorizing this one is to look for the opposites. Okay, you have opposite side, opposite angle, opposite side, opposite angle. And that was A over sine A equals B over sine B. Technically, it was equal to C over sine C, but we said you're just going to pick your favorite two, the two that are included in the problem. So again, notice um, these are your sides, whoops, um, right here, and your angles are always with the trig function. All right, example number one. Um, don't feel the need to write down this whole problem. Just read it on your screen and, and go with me here. Firefighters dug three trenches in the shape of a triangle. Okay, so clearly we're talking a triangle. And unless they tell us a right triangle, don't bother making it a right triangle. To prevent a fire from completely destroying the forest. The lengths of the trenches were 250 feet, 312, and 490 feet. Find to the nearest degree the smallest angle formed by the trenches. <clears throat> Alright, so there's two questions built in there. So there's our first question. Find the smallest angle. Well, remember, the smallest angle is going to be across from the smallest side. They always go together. So take a look at your sides. I would definitely say we're finding this side right here. Now, you just got to ask yourself, what do you have? Well, I have side, no angle, side, no angle, and side. So I don't have any angles whatsoever. I've got side, side, side. So hopefully we're going law of cosines. Remember, if you want this angle, that's across from this one, and what you're finding comes first. So you have to start with the 250. So I'm going to leave it right there. Pause it. Try it on your own. It should be a nice, easy problem. And uh, see if we get the same thing. So pause it and give it a whirl. Well, here's my work. Um, again, I've got it set up there. Notice my bracket around this stuff that's being multiplied by cosine. I have to keep that together. So I've squared each piece. That stuff is still stuck together. Added these two terms, subtracted that over, and now I can divide that term over. I had a positive 0.899 stored into A, took the inverse cosine, and I've got an angle of 26. All right, let's go back and answer the second part of the question. It does say, now it says, find the area to the nearest square foot. All right, so let's make one huge note in our notebook here about area. Okay, so we've hit law of sines, law of cosines, now here's area. You must have, the only thing you can have is side, angle, side. You have to have that in order to do law, I'm sorry, to do the area formula. Now, side, angle, side, I just want to reiterate, means you have the side, the angle next to it, and the next side. Notice I'm not skipping any sides or angles. I have to have them all in order like that. So if we look back at our picture, do we have side, angle, side? Well, we didn't at first, but we did find that angle to be 26 degrees. So now if I look, I have this side, the angle in between it, and the next side. I can do my area formula. So area equals, hopefully you have this one memorized as well, one-half AB sine C. And all you had to remember is that these are your two sides, and this is your angle, as long as you have side, angle, side. So I have one-half, uh, 490 times 312 times the sine of 26 degrees. And I get an area, I'm going to stick it on the other side here, it says to the nearest square foot, 33,509 33, feet squared for my area. 
All right, let's try another one. So again, just take your time. Let's make sure we have the law of sines, cosines, and that area formula memorized. Real quickly, if I had a parallelogram instead of a triangle, I would basically say a parallelogram is made up of two triangles, so I could easily take this one half out or literally multiply it by two. Question two. So definitely sketch this picture out, and here we go. In the accompanying diagram of triangle ABC, A to B is 12 feet, D to C is 17 feet, and the measure of angle ABD, so followed in that order, A to B to D, that angle I made is 40 degrees, and follow the next one as well, ADB is 110 degrees. The question says find AC. Well, hopefully you're saying this looks familiar. This is a double triangle problem. We have two triangles. Can I find all, if any, of the missing sides or angles? Well, if I know two triangles or two angles in this triangle, I can easily get the third one. So I would just take my 110 plus my 40, which gives me 150, and subtract that from 180. So that tells me that other angle in the triangle is 30. And keep in mind, I've got supplementary angles here. If these two together make a straight line, again, I can say 180 minus 110 gets me 70 degrees, so that angle is 70. Whoops. Now, I don't think I can get any other angles in the picture, so I'm just going to have to go with what I have. Remember, in a double triangle problem, you always want to find the side that they share first. All right, that's what we're going to find. Before we get our answer, we have to get the side they share. So I'll put a big X in blue there so you can see. I would say that's the side the two triangles share. If I were to trace over them, that A to D is in the small triangle and A to D is in the big triangle. So I definitely think I have a law of sines. So I have X, which is across from 40. So X, notice the angle goes with the trig function. Side of 12, which is across from the 110. And again, I'll pause it, go ahead, get your answer, and then you can compare with mine. So hopefully you can follow my work. I did a nice cross multiply. Remember, the single term should come in front. X should come in front as well. Uh, I divide it out, and I've got 8.2084. Now notice, it's not exactly 8, so don't tell me it's 8. You've got to use this number and store it into alpha A. All right. Now, the question said find AC. And so that would be this side here that we're looking for. And now I'm going to put my blue X, I'm going to put a big alpha A on there because I stored that into alpha A. Now I know my triangle's a little messy, but let me pull it out for you and see if that helps at all. I know that's 17, I'm looking for this, I just found that in alpha A, and that angle's 70. I think you have, if you look carefully, you have side, the angle next to it, and side. Side, angle, side would definitely be law of cosines. So. My second problem, I'm going to do a law of cosines, and again, I'm finding, what I'm finding comes first, so I'm going to start with that x squared. My two sides, which I've stored a into one of them, a squared plus 17 squared, minus 2 times a times 17, remember it's law of cosines, use cosine of 70. Now, this is the nice one because the x is by itself, so you're going to type all of this chunk in the calculator together. All right, and then meet me with your answer. So pause it and get an answer. So hope you follow that work. Again, I typed all this junk in the calculator together. I got this number, and remember that's x squared. I stored it into b and took the square root and got 16.153. Said to the nearest foot, so I'm going to say that side is 16 feet. All right, so we've covered law of sines, law of cosines, area, a double triangle problem. Let's see what's next. Question three. Our good old friend, the ambiguous case. All right, now even though this is multiple choice, this is one of the questions that requires some of the most work. Let's go ahead and draw out what they give us. We know it's triangle ABC. They tell us A, B, and C here. Side A is 5. Remember, side A is across from angle A. And I know it's a side because it's a lowercase letter. Side C is 4. Again, across from angle C, I know it's a side, it's a lowercase letter, and angle A is 40. Okay, now before I begin, let's just see what we have. I have an angle, I have the very next side, I don't have the next angle, but I have the next side. I have angle side 
side. So I know I'm using law of sines. So I would say 40 is across from 5, and 4 is across from angle C. So that's what I'm going to find. Go ahead and solve for angle C. So hopefully you followed my work. All right, so we're not done with this problem. Now that you followed that work and we've got that angle of 31 degrees, remember, you have to first see how many triangles you can construct. So you try to make triangle 1. Now, the only deal is you have to use that given angle. So that given angle was 40 degrees. So if I have to use this, so let's just make a note underneath that that was given. This is the angle you found, which is 31. Is it possible to make a triangle? Well, I would say definitely yes. Basically, we said these two just have to add up and be less than 180. If I add those up, subtract from 180, I should get an angle of 109. Now, we try to get, well, let's first of all talk about what type of triangle that is. Since this angle is greater than 90 degrees, this is going to be called an obtuse triangle. Now, we try to get a little greedy and construct another triangle. Remember, the most you can make is two. It's either 0, 1, or 2. You still have to keep the given angle. That does not change. Okay, so notice that angle stays the same. Now, the angle you're changing is the one you found. Remember, sines is positive. If I remember all students' tip cows, sines is positive in the first, and that's where this angle is, or in the second. So to get my other option, I have to do 180 minus the angle I found. So 180 minus 31 gets me an angle of 149. Now ask yourself, is it possible if I use these two angles and a third to get 180 degrees? Well, of course not. 40 plus 149 is already bigger than 180. So this is completely out. So I would definitely say I have only an obtuse angle. And if I look back at my choices, I would go with option 3, an obtuse triangle only. All right, our next problem. The other big topic we hit were forces. So let's just recall, we have force 1 and force 2, and what they make in the middle is called the resultant. Okay, and you're always going to finish the picture with a parallelogram here. And the key is, the diagonal does not bisect the angle. Okay, that diagonal does not bisect the angle. If this is x, then this is y. They are not the same thing. The only way they could be the same thing is if, and only if, the forces are equal. Okay, then in that case, you have a rhombus instead of a parallelogram. Okay, but that's if and only if the forces are equal. So let's go ahead and attack this problem. I have two forces. One is 80 pounds and one is 100 pounds. Yield a resultant force of 60 pounds. Okay, finish it off with the parallelogram. Find to the nearest 10 minutes or nearest 10th of the degree the angle between the two forces. They're asking me for this whole angle here. Now, if I try to draw these triangles separately, notice here's my top angle, triangle, and here's my bottom triangle. That whole angle is not this piece or this piece. It's actually taking this piece and this piece and adding them together. So there's two options. Probably the smartest thing to do is find this angle up here. If you find this angle, then you can easily get this angle by subtracting from 180. So I'm actually going to put my x here, even though that's not the one they asked for. So does that make sense why I'm doing that? If I know this angle, I can easily get this whole angle by subtracting from 180. Remember, they're supplementary. So, I have side, the next side, and the next side, 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 tells me right away law of cosines. What you're finding comes first. I want this x, which is across from 60. 60 squared equals 80 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 80 times 100 times the cosine of x. So just a nice little law of cosines problem. I'll pause it, try it on your own, and see what you get. All right, well, hopefully you've got the same thing and you followed along. Now, here's the only catch at the end. Notice I get this to be my angle, 36.869. Now, since that doesn't answer the question, I can't round that answer. So make sure you store it in alpha A. So let me recall what we just found here. We found this angle up here. 
And in order to get the angle between them, I have to take what I got and subtract from 180. Remember, those are supplementary to each other. So I'm typing in my calculator 180 minus alpha A, and now I can round this answer to 143 degrees. All right, our last question for the night is a nice little word problem. So a wood frame is to be constructed in the form of isosceles trapezoid. Well, we haven't visited that in a while. So let's just recall a trapezoid looks like this. And isosceles means we have two equal sides. The diagonals are acting as braces to strengthen the frame. So diagonal, we'll just draw in one big diagonal here and one here. The sides of each frame measure 5.3 feet. The longer base measures 12.7 feet. And if the angles between the sides and the longer base each measure 68.4. So let me say that again. Between the sides and the longer base, that whole angle is 68.4. Find the length of one brace to the nearest tenth. And remember, the brace was the diagonal. So let's go ahead and pull that triangle on top out. And notice I'm drawing it so it looks the same. The question said find the length of that brace. This was 5.3, this was 12.7, and again, I'm just going to use the fact that these two angles are supplementary, that they add up to 180. So if this whole bottom angle is 68.4, I can easily get the top angle by subtracting from 180, and I get 111.6. And now just say to yourself, I have side, the angle next to it, and the next side. Side angle sides is the law of cosines, and there we go. So I'm going to set it up as x squared equals my two sides. Oops, I'm running out of room. 12.7, I'm going to squeeze out on the end, cosine of 111.6. Um, all of this junk is on one side of the equal sign, so just type all of that in your calculator and see if you get the same thing. So pause it, try it on your own. I've got x squared equals 238.9, stored that into alpha a, square root of my alpha a, and I've got my x equals 15.5 to the nearest tenth. Well, there you have it. That's been a quick review of everything we've done this past two weeks. Uh, so take a note, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great night.